thought I'd just do a little comparison on these little switch mode regulators you can get. He's basically replaced a 7805, 7808 series, that kind of thing. Right, you can get different voltages and get 5 volt, 3.3 volt, that sort of stuff. Though this one does like 2.7, 3.3, 3, 7.5, 6, 5, 12, 9 volts. That's these, what these ones come in. This one comes in 3.3, 5, and 12. I actually used one of this particular module in a project recently, and I noticed it was getting hot just sitting there with nothing actually running off it, just idling. I thought, well, that's not right. It shouldn't be getting warm just like that. It does use a bit of current resistance to sit in there, surprising. It's about 17 milliamps it's sitting there using. And this one here uses basically nothing. You can barely even see it. It only registers 1 milliamp sometimes. Sometimes it shows nothing. So this one's much more efficient as far as quiescent current. So I thought, oh, let's hook this up to a test board and actually see what we're getting. We'll load these things up and do some comparisons and see how much noise comes out of them, how they handle the loading. Uh, they're both rated at 1 amp. So they should be basically identical specs, well, expectations I should say. But this has got a really small chip on it. It's quite a small chip on there, and that's the one that's on here. It's quite a little bit bigger. And also the inductor is on this one a bit bigger. So you think this one's going to be a bit bigger because it's got larger components on it. So it looks like maybe it should be slightly better. But you'll see there's only one filter cap. So you've got a tantalum there and a filter cap. And this has got a few more filter caps on it. So I think that gives it away a little bit about the effort that's gone into the engineering of these to start with I suppose. We'll show you this one first then we'll show you this one. I've got the scope set up and the DC electronic load and I'll show you what loads are doing and um, it should be interesting. So as you can see I've got the thing put in the board so I'm going to show you the scope now and the, the DC electronic load and I'll show you what's going on. So you go, you can see the Keysight scope over here shown the waveform. I've got it set to AC coupling. Up here we can see the actual voltage that the module's putting out and you can see the loading I'm putting on currently, which is currently set to zero. Well, it's currently zero because the load turned off. So I can step right through and we'll see what, how this thing handles the current draw and what the voltage goes down so you can also simultaneously see the, the noise on it. it. Already you can see it's quite a bit of noise. I don't know whether you can see it on camera, but it's actually 200 millivolts and it's not even loaded yet. All right, so let's try loading this thing up and actually see what happens. Now, I'm gonna to actually turn this down a bit. So I noticed on this DC electronic load, is you could be on so the, the decimal place there, first optimal place and when you change the dial after it's been turned on or off it'll actually jump to the least infant digit which is a bit, little bit annoying because you have to keep bringing it over a bit of a firmer quirk that signal should fix so if I turn the load on or off and I try and dial it you can see it's jumped over to the least infant digit maybe it's intentional, I don't know, but I find it annoying right, so there we go, load is now on Look over here. I'm going to do 100 milliamps at a time. So 100 milliamps, you can see voltage already dropped slightly. Uh, it's not a great program I've got here. I'm going through some little um, DuPont cable stuff like that. So you're going to get some voltage drop. I, mean, I could actually hook up with the um, sense leads, but I'm not going to worry about that. You see, for comparison, anyway, between this module and the other module, you see there's a difference. So you can see the noise on the scope there. That's 233 millivolts peak to peak. 42 millivolts RMS and let's wind this up. Let's change hands. It's got to half an amp. See the voltage dropped down to 4.5 volts. The noise is has increased slightly, it's like 300 millivolts peak to peak. DC about 46. Well DC RMS about 46. So they rated at 1 amp, so it's got to 1 amp. One too far. 4.1 volts has dropped down quite a bit. Again, there's going to be some drop through those G-Pong cables. And we're getting 50 millivolts, well, 51 millivolts RMS and 400 millivolts peak, peak noise. You can see it's quite a significant noise on there, really. But you can actually wind this car up a bit more. It's rated at 1 amp. It's 1.5. Right, that's really pushing it. You know? Anyway, we'll drop this back down again. And we'll do the same thing on the other module. Okay, the other module's plugged in. You can see the voltage output is very slightly higher. It's about 4.1. It's sitting just a fraction higher. Whether that bothers you or not, I don't know. It depends. I suppose it depends. Right, it's turning output on. And I need to adjust the current. That's 100 milliamps. You can see the noise on here instantly is much, much better. So wind this up to go half an amp like I did before. 
in 4.7 volts so you can see the voltage drop is half as much as it was on the other module and it's using well struggling less it's certainly got at least noise coming out of it so the noise right now is 130 millivolts peak to peak about 6.5 millivolts RMS going to the scope let's wind this up do one amp see 4.3 volts it's dropped down to and the noise is 140 Ish, yeah, 140 millivolts peak to peak and 6.57, 6.5-ish um, RMS according to the key site there. And yes, I don't have um, limiting turned on there, there's no bandwidth limit or anything on the key site, it's fully open, so it's not like it's being cut off by high frequency or anything. So let's get the one half amps, just like I did the other module, and that's dropped down to two and a half. So once it gets up to the high limit, it collapses, you can see the it collapses here. So that was it, about 1.4 amps is where it collapses, 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 1.1 to 1 1.2 is where it starts to collapse. So that's fine, it's rated at 1 amp, so it's, you know, it's still exceeding what it's supposed to do. But immediately you can see it's much, much nicer. Now, that's not all. So with the DC electronic load turned off, you can see the current on here is negligible. Almost nothing. Okay, that's the quiescent current of that device just sitting there doing nothing. Now if I unplug that one and plug in the first device which had the high noise, that's what we get. 16 milliamps. So that's just sitting there generating noise and using power. So yeah, that's quite a big difference between considering these two modules are supposed to be basically the same kind of thing. Um, it just goes to show that if you pay a little bit more and get a slightly better module, you can get a much better result. Much lower noise, less wasted power. Sure, it can't handle the current as well, but the other module can definitely, the, the noisier module can handle a bit more current. You can exceed, you know, that one amp a bit more easily. But as long as you keep it within the limit of what is specified, it seems to be fine. But yeah, that's quite an interesting wastage on there, isn't it? Plug the original module back in again, and that's getting warm too. Visual module back to that, here we go, 1 to 2 milliamps in this case. I really need a bit more resolution on there, I could plug in something else to check the current, couldn't I? Mm. Anyway, it's pretty good. There will be links for these things down below, so uh, take a pick, but I recommend this one. I might make it as good and not so good, or something. So there you go, this module here is far better than this module here when it comes to noise and efficiency. Well, at least quiescent current. Get this one. Don't get this one. Hope you found it interesting. Get you later. Bye. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting me to help me buy items for mailbag or projects to work on, you know, bits of test equipment to repair, that kind of thing. Any money that goes, goes towards that is helpful because it is expensive buying test equipment to do repairs on, especially if I'm not actually going to be using it that much or it's something I could do without. Or, you know, as in most cases, you can do without things. So having a Patreon supporters and people that donate to me via PayPal is, is very helpful. So if you're interested in helping support me and um, contribute to the channel, then please check out my Patreon page, my PayPal donation options, which are down in the, in the description down there. Click on the Show More tab, this is down there. Thank you very much for not supporting me. I enjoy making videos, enjoy showing what I'm playing around with. It was just originally I was going to video bits of what I'm doing at the time. I was, you know, if I'm working on something, I'll do a video of that and slap it up, which was going to be rather random and erratic. And I've ended up basically turning my life into doing YouTube videos and buying things and trying to create content to keep you guys entertained. Yeah, if you want to support me, that's great. Um, of course, that would certainly be appreciated because this is an expensive hobby. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Click the bell icon. Bye. So I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos, so if you haven't seen my previous stuff, then make sure you go and look. I've got hundreds of them, like 644 videos I've done so far. So go and check them out. I've seen a variety there. Go back and look at the back catalog. Pages and pages of them. Pages of playlists as well. All these things too. Loads of them. Go and check them out. Make sure you go and watch more stuff. Watch more. Watch more. Watch more.